Hey Joe, it's Folks here. In today's video, I'm going to show you the steps that you need to take to open your print-on-demand store, get set up with a print-on-demand supplier, and create your first product. In this video, I'm also going to share some tips and some strategies that I use on my own print-on-demand stores. I started my first print-on-demand store in 2016, and I have a little bit of a different approach than what most people recommend. If you're looking to build a brand in the year 2026, I've also linked my niche brand blueprint training. It's completely free. I have the link down in the description. It shows you the new way to sell print on demand products, plus a bunch of Shopify and social media tutorials. Now, before we actually jump into some tutorials where I demonstrate how to do some different things to start your store, I wanna talk a little bit about what print on demand actually is. That way, if you don't know, you'll fully understand what you're getting into. If you wanted to jump right to the tutorial portion, you can go to this timestamp right here. Now, print on demand is called print on demand because our orders are printed on demand. Every single product you sell on your store does not actually exist until you receive a sale. When you receive a sale, your product is actually going to be printed by your supplier, packaged and mailed to your customer. Again, that's why it's called print on demand. Now, this is a great way of selling products online because in order to open a store, you don't actually have to order any inventory in advance. As a print-on-demand seller, you can open your store, you can make designs, and you can publish products to your store completely free. You can quite literally get everything open and begin marketing without having to do anything with your inventory. The only time you actually have to pay for an order is when you have a sale. And if you're wondering, print-on-demand is in fact growing. This study here predicts that by the year 2034, there will be over over a hundred billion dollars in print-on-demand sales. Now to put that in perspective, if you look at 2025, we are just under 13 billion dollars, which means we have almost a 10x growth ahead of us over the next 10 years or so. If you wanna see more about that breakdown, I made this video here recently and dove into it all. Now to do print-on-demand, there are many different ways that you can actually sell products. Some people will start an Amazon store, some people will sell on Redbubble, some will sell on Etsy, but personally I sell on Shopify and I create what I call a niche brand. This is what I talk about inside of the niche brand blueprint training that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's completely free. There's a link down in the description. This to me is the best way to actually make real money with print on demand because you're building something for the long term. You're not just chasing trends and uploading random designs to Amazon or to Etsy. You're actually building something that you own and you can also take full advantage of the power of social media. The first step is actually starting your Shopify trial. Now what's great is Shopify actually offers a $1 a month for three months deal. You also get three days free at the beginning of it. So that way you can basically get your store entirely built and then start marketing without having to pay more than a dollar a month for your store. I've got a link to this page down in the description so that way you can get started. Oh, and if you want more about Shopify versus Etsy, make sure to check out this video here. The next step is actually installing a print-on-demand supplier to your store. Now, inside of the Shopify app store here, there are almost 700 different apps that we could potentially install. The one that I recommend is called Gelato. It is free to use. They've got a bunch of really great AI tools and they We've got over 140 local production hubs in 32 different countries. They also have a lot of really awesome products that we will dive in and take a look at in a little bit. I'll also demonstrate the creation of a product within Gelato and publishing it to your store. In order to install it, simply click on the install button here on the listing. When you do that, you basically just have to give it permission to access things on your store. This is totally typical. You don't need to be worried about doing this and then we can click install. Now you are then brought to this page here and you're going to want to go ahead and create yourself a Gelato account. Now down in the description I do have a link that you can use if you wanted to go directly to that Gelato install page that way you don't miss anything. Now once you have your Gelato account you are ready to start creating products and publishing them to your store and honestly this is where a lot of print-on-demand beginners begin to go into 
many different directions at once. One of the worst things that you could do would be to just start making designs at this stage. Most people that do that end up with a very confusing and messy store that really doesn't have a lot of potential. If you're someone that's just sort of chasing trends and making designs for as many different products as possible, you're probably going to, like I said, find yourself in a confusing mess. In a moment, we're going to come back to Gelato and demonstrate the creation of a product, but first I wanna sort of talk through some strategy when it comes to planning out your store. One of the first things that you're going to want to think about is what niche you're actually going to be going after. Your niche is important because you're defining your target market. Like I said, in a lot of cases, there are beginners who choose multiple niches. Maybe they're going after five or six or seven different target markets at once. And then what they do is they sort of dilute their store. In order to create a true niche brand, you need to be geared towards something specific. Now, obviously, once you've got a niche, you also want to control yourself a little bit. What I mean is you don't want to start going through Gelato's catalog and start choosing a dozen products to begin making designs for. Instead, what I always try to do is choose like two products to start with when I'm opening a store. That way, everything is much more manageable and honestly, a little bit more cohesive. And now, one of the biggest questions that I always get asked is how many designs should I have on my store when I first open it? Some people will recommend you to create a hundred designs or more. Personally, I think that's really just a great way to burn yourself out. Most print-on-demand beginners are not going to be able to create anywhere close to 100 great designs, and they're likely going to take way too long to actually make that many. By the time they have 100, they'll likely feel burnt out, and they'll not be interested in putting in the rest of the work that's needed to actually make their store a success. For that reason, I start my stores with about 10 designs or so. If you're starting with two print-on-demand products, that would mean making like four or five designs per product, building your store and getting yourself open. Now, obviously, as time goes on, you would want to make more designs and you'd want to grow that catalog and even add more products. But the point is at the beginning to start slow. That way you're not burning yourself out. And that way you can actually get open quickly to see if your store has any potential. Personally, I would rather make a handful of designs, get my store open in a couple of weeks, begin to test the market and see if what I've done actually has any potential before making 100 designs only to find out that my store was a dud. Now, back in Gelato, you can see that the store is active. If you had linked it to your store, as I showed before, and created your account, your window should look like this. Now, on the left-hand side, you will see lots of different things that Gelato offers, everything from personalization of your designs, some branded packaging, and some AI mockups within their mockup studio. In the near future, I'm gonna have some videos here on my channel where I break a lot of those down. Right now, what we're gonna do is dive into their product catalog and begin creating something to publish to our store. Now, here inside of Gelato's product catalog, they have hundreds of different items, everything from wall art to various apparel and accessory products as well. One thing you'll notice on each product is the price and the name of it, as well as where it ships from. If you wanted to save on every single one of your products, their Gelato Plus option is a great way to get that savings. Gelato estimates that with about 10 sales per month, it would pay for your Gelato Plus subscription. Personally, every time I can save money on print-on-demand products, I always go for it, even if my store is new, because with cheaper prices, it allows me to price my products more competitively and offer better discounts, especially around the holidays. For the sake of this video, we are going to be creating this product here. Basically, I'm going to grab a design file that I have on my computer, I'm going to publish it to this product and then add it to my store. Obviously at this point, if you are in the process of actually starting your store, you would wanna be spending time making your designs and choosing about two products from the Gelato catalog to make those designs for. Once you have your design, you would be doing the things that I am demonstrating right now. Once you're ready, you can click on add to store and then select your store here from the list. If you had more than one store connected to Gelato, they would show up here. This here is the design studio within Gelato. This is where we can upload a file from our computer to actually use on the product. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the layer 
layer feature here within Gelato to, to add text or images. You could also create the design entirely inside of a graphic design software like Canva or Kittle or Photoshop. I've now uploaded a design file in and you can see here that we can now move the design around. We can also resize it and get it to be exactly where we want. Once you have your design placed where you'd like it, at the top right, you can click on continue to mockups. Now Gelato is going to give you a lot to choose from. You can simply click on the checkbox next to the ones that you want to publish to your store. Once you do that, you can click on continue to details at the top right. Now from here, you can edit your product descriptions, you can edit your product titles as well. You can also edit all of the pricing of your product. Keep in mind, all of this can be updated later and anything you type here, you are not forced to keep. The product title up here is what you're going to be calling your product and the description is what's actually gonna show on your product page. When it comes to pricing, right inside of here, you can see that we are able to see the product cost and the shipping cost. Now, the way that this works works is when we make a sale, Gelato is going to bill you for the total of the product cost plus the shipping cost. So that amount is what we want to make sure we cover with our retail price as well as what we're potentially charging our customers for shipping. Now, when you're creating this, let's say that we were to type right here, $30. You will see that over on the right hand side, your potential profit estimate is shown right there. If you hover over this trend graph, you'll see what Gelato is showing as the trend for this item. Now, obviously, depending on what you're doing with your design, you might be able to go higher than the actual trend, especially if your design is highly detailed or if you've got personalization in it or something like that. At the end, you'll see a summary and at the top right, you can publish the design to your store. Once you do, it's going to end up as a product on your store and I'll show you what that looks like. We can now see that this product is inside of the store. If you'd like to edit anything, any of the descriptions or the prices or even the mockups, you can do that from this window here, right inside of your Gelato account. That information can also be edited by clicking on the products tab within your Shopify store and then clicking on the product that you would like to edit right inside of here. Again, you can change images, you can change the description, you can change the title and the price down below. This here is inside of your Shopify store and anything that you you change here will also carry over to inside of Gelato. You can see that this product is now live on the store. Again, you would be able to change your description, you'd be able to change the title and your prices at any time. Now, obviously at this stage, you are ready to begin customizing your store, assuming that you've been following along and you've created now about 10 designs and you've published them to your store. To customize your store, you're going to click on online store within your Shopify account. You will also see a black button that says customize. This here is a store that I use for training purposes. And so I actually already have a completely customized theme template. What we're going to do to actually edit one from scratch is we're going to scroll down here and click customize on this one. Now yours is not going to look like this. You are going to just click customize from yours because your store is new. This here is a store that I use for training and I've already done quite a bit on it. Once it loads up, you're going to see something that looks like this. Now the way that this all works is that each thing that you see inside of the home page of the store is called a section. Over here on the left, under the template heading, you will see a lot of different sections. Now, each one of these could be deleted by clicking the trash can if you wanted to. You could also just use the eyeball on the right hand side and you could hide it. If I click on the eyeball here, this will actually disappear and we now have a completely blank slate. Over here, you'll see something that says as add section. You can scroll through and you can choose different sections to add. If you wanted to have a banner like this in here, you could put any image you want. You could also edit the text to whatever you want. Again, this is your store, so you're gonna wanna put something there that makes sense for what you're selling. Once you have all of your products in as well, you could put them into a collection and you could feature those right here on your store. Essentially, if you were selling hoodies and posters, you could have one row of hoodies. You could also add another featured collection 
collection like this and you could put all of your posters there. You can also add a featured product section like this and feature a specific product. For the sake of this, I'm going to add our Gelato demo product that we just created. I'm simply going to search for it. I'm going to type in Gelato and then going to click here on Gelato demo one and you'll see that design, that product that we just created show up right here on the homepage. Now, obviously you're gonna want to have more than just a couple of products on your homepage. Usually I'm putting some different things on there about why the store was created, what it hopes to accomplish and why people should buy from it. Of course, your homepage is going to be a great way for you to showcase all of those things and you're going to want to put effort into it. You're also going to want to name your store down in the description of this video. I will have a link where you can get a 99 cent dot store domain. A dot store domain is something that is a really cool way to set your store apart. So far, right now, they have done a study that shows that dot store domains get 87% more website traffic and two times higher ranking on Google. They're actually becoming super popular. Everyone from Michelle Obama to Mr. Beast, Bruce Springsteen, Maroon 5, Mariah Carey, and a whole bunch more are using dot store domains to sell merchandise online. And again, this could be a great option for your print on demand store. Before you open, there's also going to be a couple of settings that you're going to want to make sure that you adjust. Here inside of the settings tab right here, if you click on the store details at the top, you can put a store email right here. This is going to be the email where Shopify is going to send communication to you. You're also going to want to make sure that you update inside of the notifications tab all of your customer notifications. Now, by default, all of this can basically just be left as is. However, if you wanted to update something specific, let's say that you wanted to update the order confirmation email, you could edit that right here. At the top as well, you can also input a different email address if you wanted the customers to receive emails from you at something different than what you are using for your Shopify account. Sometimes people create their Shopify store using like a personal email or something like that, and then they buy an email that actually has their store's name in it or something like that, and they can enter that here. That way when your customers receive emails from you, such as some of these notifications here, it will actually have the name of your store inside of the email address. You're also going to want to activate your Shopify payments account. Now, Shopify payments is completely free to use. And basically what it is, is it's an account that allows you to receive payments from your customers. If someone's going on your store and they're placing an order with a credit card or a debit card, you're going to need to be able to actually process that payment. And to do that, you're going to need to have yourself a Shopify payments account. You can set this up in a few moments. Shopify is going to request some details from you. You're also going to need to link yourself a bank account to your Shopify payments account. That way when a customer pays you, Shopify has somewhere to actually send the money. And now at this stage, your store is ready to be open. You have a Shopify payments account. You have your customer email notifications set up. You've also got a domain on the store. You've got products. You've customized the store. And when someone makes a purchase, Gelato is fully hooked up and they will begin printing your products and packaging them for you and sending them to your customers. The point now now is to actually begin marketing your store. Here on my channel, I've got a lot of other videos talking about social media marketing. I also talked about my niche brand blueprint free course in the beginning of the video. There's a link down in the description to that. Inside, I've got some Shopify and social media tutorials there. And probably one of the biggest pieces of advice that I could give you would be to manage your expectations with your store. So many times people will make a video like this and they'll make it seem like if you just turn on your store that you're going to be making thousands of dollars in your first week without putting in hardly any effort at all. The fact is, is that print on demand, yes, has a lot of potential, but it also will require you to do some work if you actually want to make any sales and get some results from your store. Here on my channel, I really try to do my best to keep things realistic and practical. So make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for watching watching and I will see you in the next video.